What's up guys, John Carlo here again for another video. I'm here today with my friend and teammate, Placido Santos. Uh, so guys, you probably know, may have seen Placido from uh, some BJ Fanatics instructionals. He's been on a lot of uh, John Danaher's instructionals. And uh, he recently had a really nice run at the uh, East Coast Trials. So I wanted to bring him over to the channel to uh, show, us, uh, show us a technique. And uh, he hit a couple of guillotines at the trials. You, you, you like guillotines a lot, right? Yeah, which is a funny story. I didn't use the favorite guillotines, but over time it became a, a favorite weapon for sure. Nice, nice. So he's gonna show us a little concept that he likes to keep in mind when he's attacking front headlocks that helps him get uh, get to the guillotine. Okay, so. So uh, thank you, first of all, Jarvello for having me. <laughs> Flying me out, giving me expensive dinners. <laughs> 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 uh, but, uh, Anyways, uh, so something that people who struggle to get uh, front headlocks or guillotine attacks going is that uh, that I've often seen is they come to me and they ask me, uh, I get to the front headlock, but then when, once I'm there, I really have trouble getting to the guillotine against my opponent, okay? And um, typically when they first start out and you first start to learn a guillotine against other beginners or people of lower skill levels, you can get, say for example, to a front head, I get to a front headlock, I have my, uh, my chin strap in, and then from the chin strap, I insert the guillotine. However, whatever guillotine it is that you're trying to insert, right? And it, it can work, don't get me wrong. Like, this, this can be something that, you, that a person could potentially hit. However, once you start to go higher and higher in skill level, people start to know what attacks you have from where. So say for example, if I was going against John Carlo, for me to hit a guillotine on him, from a chin strap position, probably very unlikely. Why? Because Giancarlo, being a high level practitioner, has a high awareness of what attacks are available from where, right? So with that said, if I ever wanted to try to guillotine him, I'd have to somehow try to distract him. And as he's being distracted, then as his mind is focusing on something different other than the guillotine, then I come in and attack the guillotine. Um, the one of my favorite ways or one of the, the concepts that I like to use to describe this method of distraction is basically layers of movement. What do I mean by that? The more layers of movement that you can add before your front headlock or guillotine attack, then the higher the likelihood or the chance is of uh, you being able to launch a very strong guillotine attack right off the bat. All right, so say for example, one layer of movement can be I'll start in a chin strap on Giancarlo. I'll show it on this side of Giancarlo just so you can see. And from here, say for example, we hit a knee go behind, right? So I'm in the front head. From here, I hit a knee go behind. And if Giancarlo doesn't respect it, I'm gonna end up behind him, right? So obviously he has to respect the knee go behind, all right? So as I go to hit a knee go behind, Giancarlo needs to clear uh, his elbow from, uh, from uh, sorry, my knee from behind his elbow. As he does that, there's an opportunity here for me to now launch a front head. Why? Because Giancarlo is so worried about getting me from, from being behind his elbow that perhaps he may take his attention off of his neck for a split second, and that's my opportunity to attack. So once again, say for example, I, I come through, I put my knee behind his elbow, and I go to start uh, launching an attack where I get behind him. However, he's a high level practitioner, so he's not just gonna fall for just basic day one move. He's gonna step up, knee pound out, and clear his elbow from my knee. As he's doing that, I come through and I launch my guillotine attack, okay? Now, um, again, that can work, but, you know, once again, the higher and higher skill level you go, all right, probably the more layers of movement you're gonna to have to add before you guillotine attack. So remember earlier when I mentioned that I probably wouldn't be able to get Giancarlo just from chin strap right into a guillotine. If I, was to, if I was to bet, I'd probably bet I wouldn't be able to get him with this one either, okay? Why? Because as he's knee pounding out, he's gonna be very aware of his neck again, all right? So, like I said before, the more layers of movement you can add before that guillotine attack, the more chances you have of distracting them. So say for example, what might two layers of movement look like? Say for example, I'm gonna hit a knee go behind on this side. Mm -hmm. I hit a knee go behind, like so. John Paolo goes to knee pound out, and as he knee pounds out, I pass his, his head across, and I go to hit a knee go behind on the other side. So now I'm chaining two knee go behinds together. I, I hit one on his, on his left side, he went to clear it, and now I hit a, a, um, I hit a pass by, a throw by, 
where now I'm attacking an eagle behind on his other side. So now he wor he's worrying about two movements, okay? And as he goes to clear the second one, now I hit a front head, okay? So that can be very tricky. What, what, what's happening here is that because there's more that he needs to pay attention to, um, his ability to track uh, my potential attacks are becoming harder and harder. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. Um, it's one of those things where like, if you want to create or be more successful with attacks, you have to be able to create those dilemmas. That's one thing that John teaches all the time is to always create a dilemma. So that's essentially what you're kind of a, an idea that you're using is creating right. that, that dilemma. Um, he also showed before we started rolling the camera, um, a couple other variations of these like layers of movement that you can start adding on uh, the three quarter Nelson was another one that you could yeah. add on. So yeah. uh, there's, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can apply this. So this is a really good concept to, uh, to keep in mind. Yeah, you can get super creative. So say for right there, I just showed two, you can layer on three. So say for example, uh, I'm just showing the knee go behind because it's a very simple one to launch from. From here, I hit a knee go behind Giancarlo, he goes to get behind and I pass him across. As I pass him across, I lock up a, uh, a three quarter. Okay. Now from here, I switch. I put him down. There's two, right? I just la I just launched two movement attacks. I hit a knee go behind. Then I went behind his other elbow, put in a three quarter. Now he's working his way back up. As he starts to work his way back up, right there, I could attack guillotine, or I could go right back to passing behind his elbow. Okay. And once again, the more movement I generate, the less likely Giancarlo is to see that uh, that potential attack coming. Um, so that, that's just a, uh, a concept or a theory that I like to uh, uh, show people that struggle with hitting front headlock attacks. Because again, oftentimes when you're looking to front headlock somebody, static is not your friend. You want to generate movement because with movement comes openings and with openings you can attack. Yeah, so super cool concept um, that Placido showed. Um, I, I personally learned something from this, uh, this concept. And uh, I think it's a super easy to implement, a super easy idea that you guys can implement right away in your, in your guys' training, just something to be aware of. Because we end up in situations like that all the time, front headlock situations. And sometimes I see people struggling to get uh, guillotines because they're just fixated on the guillotine and the guy knows that that's exactly what you want. So just creating that distraction, focus or forcing them to think about something else, take their mind off of their neck for just a split second could make the difference for you guys to finish it. So guys, so thanks so much for sticking to the end of the video. Uh, make sure you check the description below for all of my different content. And Placido also has a YouTube channel that he posts a lot of good content on there. So I'm gonna check, I'm gonna leave the link for his channel below in the description. So make sure you guys check it out.